My name is Arthur Gallant. I'm 22 years old. I maintain a part-time job in a grocery store. I've done a lot of work in the media trying to get my message out there, but I still think at the end of the day I'm still a normal human being. And I really don't want myself to be defined or my life to be defined based on the struggles I've gone through. I'm more than happy to share my story to, you know, help make other people feel like they're not alone. But at the same time, I'm still a normal 22 year old who likes to do normal things, hang out with my friends, go to school, keep a job. I was born to a mother who is developmentally disabled. My father left before I was born. My grandmother, um, she had to take care of all of us. And so with my mom being in the state she was in, I really had to, uh, to take control of my life. I mean, I really didn't think that as a little kid, but it just kind of came naturally to me. I remember being eight or nine years old trying to help my mom with her taxes, um, making sure that she knew to buy groceries, that, you know, to remind her that um, she had to take a bath or she had to do laundry. A lot of the symptoms aren't necessarily what people think. Um, I get very tired when, when I'm depressed. Um, I get very nauseous when I'm depressed. I lose my appetite. I get very emotional. Um, I, you know, even crying at spilled milk, for example. Um, everyone's symptoms are unique, but you really have to, to learn what, what yours are. If someone asks if you're feeling down today, um, I think you might want to assure them that things are okay, but it's part of a bigger picture. Um, if you might see somebody at work who, who normally doesn't seem down, for an example, you might be able to approach them and, and hear them out and, and empathize or, or sympathize with what they're going through. Um, you know, there's really no right or wrong way necessarily to, to tell people what you're suffering with, but I just think it's it's a lot easier to kind of ease it into a conversation, just kind of throw it in there. It's, it's a lot harder to kind of do a, a cold open, for an example, and just automatically come out and say, my name is Arthur and I suffer from depression. Don't give up, but I would say get help. Um, because I, I think far too many times people think that they can do the struggle on their own. And as early as last year, I thought I could get through this on my own and was kind of in denial that I needed help for my depression because I learned so much about myself. I learned so much about what triggers my depression. Um, I learned new coping mechanisms that while they seem so simple when someone tells me what they are, even though I've gone through this, it does not make me an expert. And there's so much learning to do. It's learning what your triggers are. It's learning how to cope with the symptoms. It's learning how to pick up on the symptoms. I would try to insert some confidence. I think you know, there was a lot of positive things about me, lots of perseverance. And while I think I look back and, and think that I had a lot of skills to help me move forward, I regret that I didn't really realize that I had those skills. A lot of people don't know, but I have suffered discrimination in the workplace. I'm sick of just the amount of stigma. I mean, I cannot use that word enough. There's so much stigma and there's so much discrimination in our daily lives that I feel like by educating one person at a time that it really, I think it, I'm not necessarily think people become accepting, but I think they become um, a bit open-minded um, to research or to become educated about mental illness. I sometimes think you need an activity like bowling to help you forget about some of your struggles. It was just something I did uh, growing up. Um, I mean, it kind of keeps my grandmother's memory alive. She was on the bowling league before I was born, and my mom kind of did this as a kid, so it's something that's happened over a couple generations of her family, and it was just always a way to spend time together with my family, uh, especially during tough times, kind of made us forget about the tough times, and I guess to this day, it, it, still, um, it still does that. I think the best advice I ever heard, which, which I stand by, is ask the person what needs to be done for them. Do not pretend like you have all the answers. Sometimes they might say, can you assist in calling this person or calling that person? It could be as simple as, can you go out for a coffee with me? Or can I just vent to you, even though I know you can't do anything about it? Just lending them in here. There has just been so many challenges in my life that I have overcome. 
and there's a lot of things that I didn't think I could get through and, and believe it or not, walking on the edge of one of the world's tallest freestanding structures in the world didn't really even come close to that. But from a physical standpoint, I've never really had that kind of a challenge. But I thought, you know what, if there's so many emotional and psychological challenges that I can overcome, you know, standing on the edge of a, a tower, you know what, that's nothing. And I think the good things really started to happen to me once I started to believe in myself and thought good things could happen. I'm a firm believer in the phrase, expect the unexpected. Uh, there's a lot of things, including doing this, that I didn't really know would come about, but I think there's been so much good that has happened to me. I think I've kind of learned to expect that if I put my mind to it, it will.